Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the rule of inference known as the constructive dilemma. This one is a little bit more complicated than previous rules of inference we've seen because it involves three, three premises. We have two implications to start off with, P implies Q, and R implies S. Notice that we have four simple sentences in total there, and they're split evenly across those two premises. So we have just P and Q up top, and just R and S down bottom. There is no overlap between those two. The third premise is the disjunction between the antecedents of those two implications. So we have P or R. And if we have all of that, then we can conclude that the disjunction between the second half of those two implications, Q or S, is true as well. Essentially what's going on here is that we're applying modus ponens across the various different cases that part 3 gives us. So part 3, premise 3, tells us that P is true, or R is true, or both P and R are true. Well, in the first case, suppose P is true, then we have Q being true through line 1 and modus ponens. If we have the second case where just R is true, then through modus ponens and line 2, we have S being true. And if both of them are true, then through modus ponens and lines 1 and 2, we have both Q and S being true. And that's exactly what we see with the conclusion there. We see Q or S being true, which means Q could be true, or S could be true, or both of those things could be true. To see this in action with an example, suppose that premise 1 said, if I am running, I am happy, and premise 2 said, if I am sleeping, I am dreaming, and finally premise 3 said, I am running or I am sleeping. Well, if I'm running, then I'm happy. If I'm sleeping, then I'm dreaming. And if I'm running and sleeping, perhaps I'm running in my sleep, then I'm both happy and I'm dreaming, which is exactly, again, what the conclusion says. I'm happy or I'm dreaming or both. Now, normally what I've been doing for these rules of inference is then showing you that this is true on a truth table. But as I mentioned at the top, we have four different simple sentences here. And in the past, we've explored what it looks like when you do a truth table with four simple sentences. And of course, we have one, two, three, four complex or compound sentences here, which are only going to make things more complicated. So I'm actually going to hold off on doing that truth table because again, it's pretty complicated, something that you might want to do on your own. And instead of showing you how to prove it using a truth table, instead, later on in this course, when we've learned how to do proof by contradiction, I will use proof by contradiction to prove the constructive dilemma through what actually is going to turn out to be a much simpler process than a truth table. So of course, you don't know how to do this quite yet, but by the end of this course, when we start getting into proofs, you will learn how to do this, and I will take you through this step by step so you can see that constructive dilemma is true, not using, of course, constructive dilemma to arrive at that conclusion. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you here next time when we talk about the modus tollens version of the constructive dilemma, which is known as the destructive dilemma. Hope you enjoyed this again, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.